How do you practice mindfulness during the workday? Let's face it, our workplaces are anything but mindful. But I want to introduce to you some strategies that you can use tomorrow when you go to work that will help you introduce a little bit of Zen into the chaos. In a recent survey of people's attitudes to work and what was happening in their work, three most uh, common words that were mentioned were stress, frustration, and fatigue. Also, a recent survey showed that 47% of people are focused in other things rather than what they should be focused at in the workplace. And so therefore the question comes, how can we be a little more mindful in work? How can we introduce a little more Zen into the chaos that many of us are feeling. Today, I want to share with you eight practices that will help you bring in some mindfulness into the workplace. But before we go anywhere, we need to ask, what is mindfulness? And you know, mindfulness very easily is this, staying focused in the present moment as if our life depended on it without judgment. Now, that's an interesting definition. It comes from John Kabat-Zinn, who is one really one of the greatest thinkers on mindfulness presently and really introduced mindfulness back and really introduced this new awareness of the power of mindfulness. And what's important about that definition is it's this focus non-judgmentally because what happens is it's incredibly difficult to focus. I said earlier that 47% of people are focused on things other than what they're supposed to be. And really to refocus becomes important. So let's look at eight practices that will help us bring the world of mindfulness to work. Practice number one is breath and getting in touch with our breath because all mindfulness begins in really good breathing. And so a question I often ask is, where are you breathing from? Because sometimes when we are stressed, sometimes when we're triggered, our breathing is up here in the upper part of our body and we're really not breathing for the fullness that we can. So I always invite people to put a hand on their belly button and to breathe in and as they breathe in and feel their stomach extending. And then as they breathe out, to feel that stomach retracting and their hand coming back in. That's breathing in the diaphragm area, which is incredibly important. It's the fullness of the breath. Not only is it essential for mindfulness practices, it's also essential to speaking and essential to communication. So number one, get in touch with the breath. Practice number two, begin mindfulness before you get in the work door itself. Yes, mindfulness begins the moment we wake up. Let's be honest. The moment we wake up, all of a sudden, it's like a train that is leaving, going from the tracks. We go into automatic, automatic functioning. We don't think about it. We get up, we go to the bathroom, we do what we need to do, we get breakfast, we go to work, we walk in, we turn on the computer. How much of that is really thought out? How much of that is truly mindful? And if we're honest, not a lot of it. So therefore, can we even introduce five minutes at the beginning of the day before we leave for work or in the car before we go to work where we're able just to introduce some gentle breathing, some gentle focusing, coming up with an intention for how we want to live the day. Second practice, begin mindfulness before you even get to work. Number three, be mindful of our priorities. Let's face it, we live in a workplace that is chaotic and at times its pace is so quick. And often what happens is we're not able to prioritize. Everything seems to have a priority. I remember I had a client who was just getting overwhelmed with everything. She said, I just don't know where to start. And if that's one of your questions, I don't know where to start, then that's a problem with priorities. So one of the things I said is when you get into work, before you do anything, just sit down, breathe, and be very mindful in prioritizing what needs to be done today. Is the thing on top of your desk the thing that really needs to be done? 
Or is there something else which is more important before I get to that? Practice number three, be mindful as you prioritize. Practice number four, let's be honest. What's the first thing you do when you sit down at your desk? If you're like 82% of the rest of the workforce, then your answer was, I check my email. Because the reality is we're addicted to our email. And the problem with email addiction is it drives us towards short-termism, responding in the moment with something that might not really be a priority. And second, we're constantly distracted. So the first thing I suggest is turn off those alerts. You know those alerts that go off when you have a new email and the message comes up? It's horrible for our focus. And then be very careful about when we choose to check our email. I suggest at the very beginning of the day not to go straight to our email, but rather to take a few moments, like I said at the last point, to truly prioritize where our attention needs to be at the beginning of the day. Some people have found it helpful to have email moments throughout the day, that they check their email at different check-in points. But whatever it is, be mindful about your email. The next thing about email as well that's important is be careful as you send email, especially if you feel yourself emotionally triggered. See, the problem with email is this. Email doesn't let us see the other person's face, doesn't let us see the other person's body, doesn't let us hear the other person's voice. So it's taking away all these emotional challenges that help us understand what the person meant. How many times have we sent an email thinking, this email's perfect, and then a few minutes later there's a knock at the door and someone says, what did you mean by that email? You see, that's the problem with email. So be mindful of the email you send, and also if you feel yourself emotionally triggered, maybe it's a good moment not to send the email, to stand back, to breathe a little bit, to think about it, and then send the email. Practice number five, mindful meetings. Oh, when I say that word meeting, I know for many of you, it just evokes hours and hours of meetings that are meaningless. But our meetings don't have to be meaningless. If we're mindful, we can really create a space where what's created in that meeting is something useful. I remember working with a client and talking about how we could make meetings a little more mindful. So some of the practices that she came up with, which were incredibly effective, was at the beginning of the meeting, there was a check-in. Everyone checked in, how were they feeling, what was going on, and acknowledge some of the stress and strain or some of the busyness that they were having. And then there was clarity about the focus of the meeting. And when that meeting drifted off, just like in personal meditation and personal mindfulness, there was an ability to refocus back to where they needed to be. Practice number six, mindful listening. I'm a great believer in the power of listening and that if we can bring our whole focus to the listening and listening to another person, then it is amazingly transformational because one thing we do not get a lot of in the workplace is to be listened to completely and entirely from another person. Our ability to be able to recognize some of the blocks that we have to listening completely, our ability to realize perhaps when we've drifted off in a conversation and are not listening, all comes down to really good mindfulness practices. To be able to notice that we're not paying attention and once again to recommit to listening to our full extent to the person in front of us. Practice number seven is checking in with ourselves when it comes to sleep and it comes to food. Here's what we know. Many of us are living with a chronic lack of sleep. And that lack of sleep impacts how we show up, impacts our ability to be mindful, impacts our ability to listen, impacts our ability to regulate our emotions. Are we getting enough sleep? And secondly, are we monitoring our energy? When our energy levels are low, once again, it's incredibly difficult to be mindful. It's difficult to be present in the moment. It's difficult to listen. So are we being mindful of our energy levels and are we feeding our bodies with food that increases that energy and helps us to be more mindful? And finally, practice number eight. It's what I call the detox. Be aware of the energy and the emotions that you are bringing from home to work and from work to home. Can you create moments, spaces between each of those events during the day where I call little detoxes? 
where we're able to recognize what emotions are we bringing from home? Are they positive? Are they negative? Are they impactful? Are they helpful? And do I need to make an adjustment? And likewise, on the way home, am I aware with the emotions that have happened throughout the day at work? And am I able to check in and to recognize, are these being helpful or not as I go home? All it takes is a few minutes of check-in. All it takes is a few moments of breath. Stress, overwhelm, frustration. These are the words that so often describe our workplace environment but it doesn't have to. There are ways of introducing calm, introducing mindfulness into our experience. If you want to learn more about mindfulness and how to do mindfulness, then you need to watch this video, which talks about the benefits of mindfulness to ourselves.